Improv is one of the most fun and worthwhile forms of theater when done correctly, but many people are confused as to where to start. I'm William, and today not only will we show you where to start, but today you will become a master of improv. Improv, or improvisational theater, is a type of theater where scenes are completely made up on the spot, or improvised. This is accomplished through games, where some information may be provided, usually from the audience, and is built upon until either a goal is accomplished or the host of the game calls scene, depending on exactly what game is played. Since everything is made up on the spot, improv is mainly comedic. You're not going to see any soap opera type plot twists made up on the spot. And while some elements of scripted theater, such as blocking, emotion, etc., still apply to improv, it is definitely a lot more loose than scripted theater. But I mean, of course when acting, you're going to need to know how to act like you're feeling a certain emotion. Now, of course, a professionally taught course would be most effective at getting started. However, you clearly don't need me telling you that a professional would be more suited to discuss this than me. You chose to watch an actor with poor hair and even worse eyesight teach you this. And I respect that choice. But, there is a reason why there are so many articles on improving in improv, and not so many on where to start. Because improv is best started just jumping right in. Not much prep you can do for things made up on the spot. However, there are some rules you should keep in mind before you start. A. Yes. It is much more fun and easy to confirm everything your partner says. A good warm up to help this is called Yes And, where one performer says something, and then their partner says Yes And, and then completes a the sentence. And the first person says Yes And, and keep going back and forth like that. Obviously, try to make it flow as much as possible like a realistic conversation. Teamwork. Focus on trusting your scene mates and doing what is best for the scene. Everyone has a part, so try and support each other. Blocking. Try not to let your back face the audience. This helps with not only letting them hear you, but is also much more visually appealing. Again, improv is comedy. So try and keep your emotions at a 10, the biggest you can possibly make them within the reality of the scene. And of course, try watching other improv and see what works. Many episodes and scenes from the show Who Is Lying To Anyway are available online to watch. Or if you're lucky enough to live near a college campus that does improv shows, most of them will be free for you to watch. Here's a tip from DanGoldstein.com. The swiftest way to add reality and depth to a scene is to have the characters call up specifics from their common history. A simple exchange such as, Are you trying to get us arrested? Like the time we ran naked through the Yale Princeton lacrosse game? Oh, just a few words? It provides a great deal of information. The audience and actors can now infer that the characters are college boys, they're troublesome, they're educated, they are in New England, they drink to excess, they have police records, they're old friends, and much, much more. With one sentence, the amount of information the improvisers can now draw on has grown greatly. Also, try and ask yourself, if this is true, then what else could be true? If someone dials the wrong number, hangs up and says, man, I keep dialing wrong numbers lately, what else could be true? Maybe he wants to order a pizza and ends up ordering a piano. Maybe he accidentally makes plans with an ex over a text instead of his girlfriend. The possibilities are endless. There are little to no props in improv, so you'll usually have to act them out. And if you're talking about something, try to be very specific. Instead of, hey, nice car, try, oh my gosh, a 1998 red Ferrari. This not only helps the audience visualize the car better, but gives the actor who may own the car more possibilities. Maybe he's a rich guy who assumes everyone's a ballet, or you could even subvert expectation for comedic effect, so the owner could actually probably be a farmer from the middle of the country. Never start with hello. Get to the interesting bits ASAP. Because of this, it's usually a good idea to have characters with pre-existing history. No, hi, how you doing, fine. Start with something interesting like, oh my gosh, an alien invasion. What are we gonna do, Frederick? Yeah, that was, that was improvised. Five years of theater training all leading up to that moment. As I said before, don't deny things that have already been set up. Don't walk through objects an actor has already established. Don't contradict things the actors have already said happened or I don't contradict actor don't contradict things actors have already said happened or are currently taking place even. Something in the acting world we like to call being <laughs> Enter and exit with purpose. Don't simply say, okay, bye, and leave. No, have a reason to enter and exit the scene. This not only provides another comedic opportunity, but also minimizes the chance of dead space in the scene. Always try to heighten a scene. 
Scenes are always better when they end on a higher energy than when they started. Try and take things to the extreme when possible. If you don't get a suggestion for the audience, try and give yourself one. Jumping off points always help. People watch improv to escape the mundane reality of the real world. So go against your usual logic. Rob a bank just because someone tells you to. Shave a cat because you think it'll change its fur color. Get weird with it, especially if you're starting the scene. It's really easy to get a good improv going if you say even one line, and then everyone goes off the last thing someone else said. Again, teamwork. Opposites not only attract, but they're entertaining as hell. So if one guy is angry, have the other guy be overly happy. If one is a homeless person, have the other one be a rich guy. Chemistry is easier when you can work off each other like this. And obviously, these are just general guidelines to help keep you on track. Obviously, since it's improv, you can do whatever, but these are just some ways to get you on the right track. Now, let's discuss putting together an actual show. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go into the technical aspects like getting a stage, advertising, etc., since those can differ wildly based on how many people you have, the people you know, etc. Rather, I'm going to go into how to practice for a show and what to do while performing it. Practice should consist of warm-ups, as well as practicing what you're actually going to perform. Here are a few examples of some warm-ups. Five things. Gather everyone up and start with one person. Let's say his name is Phil. Phil will say something like, Hey Jim, and then Jim will say, Hey what? And then Phil will say, Tell me five things about something. And then Jim will say five things about that thing. Everyone will count one, two, three, four, and then on the fifth thing, you'll yell five things. Five things, five things, five things, five things. If they don't match with what the thing is, like say the topic is clouds, and then Jim says, they're red, you will still count. This is just to get the creative juices flowing. And then it starts over with Jim asking someone else in the circle the same question, with a different topic, of course. A shakeout. This is best done at the beginning since it gets the energy way up. Everyone shakes a hand while I count quickly down from eight, and then they use the other hand, and then they use one foot, and then they use the other foot, and then keep repeating the cycle for the numbers four, two, and one. Association. Another very simple one. One person says a word, and then the person next to them repeats that word, and says a word that reminds them of that word. Then the next person says the word the previous person came up with, and a word that reminds them of that word. So it'll go like, cheese, cheese, cake, cake, pop, like that. And keep going around. Now, when performing the show, you should always have a host introduce the game and explain the rules. If there aren't enough people to perform, the game doesn't require a host to function, the host can also play to fill out the cast. When during practice, the host should also practice introducing the game right before you start. Basically, when practicing, just run through the whole show after some warm-ups. If you need a suggestion for a scene, just ask someone who's not performing in the current scene. Here are some examples of some games. Have two people in the front, and five or so in back, with one host. The ones in back can either be looking toward the scene, or have their backs facing the scene so they can only go off of sound. The two in front will start moving around in weird ways until the host says stop. Then they have to do a scene based on whatever pose they started. Any member in the back may call freeze when they see fit. And both actors in front must completely stop and the person in back will tag out one of the performers who must go in the back. The person who tagged in must assume the position of the person he tagged out and then begin a completely new scene based on the poses that they're both in. Keep repeating the cycle until the host calls scene. Yes. This requires three or more people. Ask the audience for suggestions equal to the amount of people that are performing. While in the scene, each person must die in a way matching one of these suggestions. However, if the person dies with the suggestion, say, mouse, no one else can die with the suggestion mouse. The game ends when all the players are dead. Sit, lie, stand. Get a suggestion from the audience. One person in the scene must be sitting, one must be lying, and one must be standing at all times. Act out a scene using the suggestion you got from the audience, and before the scene starts, tell the audience if one more person is sitting, lying, or standing to cough, mumble, or make any other type of noise. It's way more fun than it sounds, I swear. Especially when someone starts rapidly changing positions, like sitting down, then standing up, or then lying down, and keep doing that over and over again, forcing others to scramble to do the same in order to keep with the sit, stand, lie formula. The audience will love their pain. Should have said. This requires two or more people and one host. 
Get a suggestion from the audience. Have the actors act out a scene based off of that suggestion. At any point, the host can clap their hands and say, should have said, and the last person to speak must change his or her last line of dialogue to something else that fits within the scene. The host may clap as many times as they want to to keep changing that same line over and over and over again, but it's most fun when it's done between two and three times. If the actor did something such as jump, the host can also clap his hands and say, should have jumped, and then the actor has to jump in a completely different way. Feel free to get creative with it. A lot of the fun in improv is finding new ways to do things and getting creative. Now, obviously I can't list every single game in warm-up here, and my editor's already complaining about the length. So feel free to go find some other games, warm-ups, tips, etc. But for the sake of format, congratulations! You know how to start, improve, and perform improv. Use these and go perform on a stage in a way your parents will only mildly be ashamed of. Subscribe to this channel to become a noble today. Hit that bell and leave a comment down below with any topics you want to hear about next time. And tune in next time to become a master of everything.